Hi Alphas, how you doing? This is Life Riley and welcome to another Life Flight series where we're based on all knowledge. Um, I'm here with my guest Carlton Joseph. Um, we're here to talk about the political climate that's going on in our world today. Um, one of the reasons why we're talking about this video is it's become a huge issue for us. The demographics for my channel is age 13 all the way to 35 and um, my demographics also have a lot of um, people of color, minorities, women, and there are a lot of issues that are going on in today's political climate that just applies to us. One of the promises I made to you all is that I would make you understand what's going on in our world today in a more simplified way so that you can make more educated decisions for your future. Although some of you may not be of uh, proper voting age, within the next 10 years, 8 to 10 years, you will be. And a lot of these issues that we're dealing with right now pertain to you. So the So the candidates that we want to talk about today will be um, from the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton. We'll be talking about Bernie Sanders. On the Republican side, we'll be talking about Donald Trump. And we will be talking about Ted Cruz. Some of the discussion points that we'll be talking about as well will be on foreign policy, on the domestic policy, and economics across the board. Let's start with the Democratic side of things. Okay, well, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk, uh, when you look at, I guess we've got, we're looking at the front runners today. Yes. And the front runners are on the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton. Uh, and, uh, you know, my take on her. As far as I'm concerned, she's an establishment candidate. If you take a look at her record, uh, and she speaks very voluminously on her record. Right. Uh, if you look at her record, she is really a hawk. Uh, when I say a hawk, for folks who don't understand, she's really a very aggressive kind of a person. So if you're looking for a war candidate, a candidate who will definitely take you to war, a candidate who is staunchly Jewish in her support, regardless of what they do, then Hillary Clinton is your candidate. I have spent my entire adult life looking for ways to even the odds to help people have a chance to get ahead to find the ways for each child to live up to his or her God-given potential. I'm fighting for all Americans, not just some, for the struggling, the striving, and the successful. No matter who you are, what you look like, what faith you practice, or who you love, I am fighting for you. I'm fighting for everyone who's ever been knocked down but refused to be knocked out. I'm going to fight until every little girl in America knows she can grow up to be anything she wants, even President of the United States. If you take a look at Bernie Sanders, uh, he's a hawk also, but not, but he's also a dovish hawk. Okay. He is uh, he's a, he's a bit more pragmatic. He understands that the United States cannot just totally support Israel, no matter what she does, uh, and that, that you have to view the Palestinians as people. Okay. And he understands that since 1948, when the, when the state, of, when state of Israel was created, uh, you know, one has to understand that if you have a house, I'm going to give you a simple example. If you have a house, it's like if you own your house and someone comes in 19, comes tomorrow and they say, okay, we're going to move some people in your house and we're going to give them the whole house. We're going to give you a room in the basement. They're going to own the house and you just have to be contented with this room in the basement. Okay. You wouldn't like it and exactly, that's exactly how the Palestinians feel. Okay. They do not like it because they are not allowed to have a state. And their land was taken from them. Another country, another set of people brought from Europe were placed there, and they have a state, and you don't have a state. Now, Bernie Sanders understands the, 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 the politics of it. And he understands that you cannot just support people no matter what they do. So what you have is a reasonable person 
in charge. Okay. Let's go on the Democratic, on the Republican side. Well, that's a whole different ballgame. Donald Trump, uh, people say he's mad. I predicted when he first jumped in the race, I said Donald Trump is going to be uh, the nominee for the Republican Party. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The politicians can pretend it's something else, but Donald Trump calls it radical Islamic terrorism. That's why he's calling for a temporary shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until we can figure out what's going on. He'll quickly cut the head off ISIS and take their oil. And he'll stop illegal immigration by building a wall on our southern border that Mexico will pay for. We will make America great again. Because what he has tapped into is the fear of the working class white man who doesn't quite understand why he's in the position he's in. And I guess, you know, as a black person, you have to understand where he's coming from. He is, he is coming from a position of privilege. Privilege just because he was white. He looks around him and he sees black governors, black mayors, black congressmen, a couple of black senators, and most important, a black president. Then he looks around him again and he is still poor. And he is supposed to be the privileged guy. So if you live in a privileged world and you are still poor, then Donald Trump is your man. Because, or at least you think he's your man, because he's saying what he knows you want him to say. He's divide and conquer. He's, he's, he's preying on your innate, innate uh, racism, racist uh, criteria that you're using. So... Same thing for Ted Cruz. Both of them are using the same thing. Now, Ted Cruz is a different kettle of fish in the sense that now here is a guy who, whose father is, uh, is, is, is Cuban, mm -hmm. whose mother is white American. They're, he was born in Canada. And really, you know, I, I'm amazed that Donald Trump hasn't st stayed with his issue of is he really a viable candidate? Because he's not a citizen of the United States. Wisconsin is a beautiful place where the people place solutions over slogans. Our campaign is for the working moms, the truck drivers, the mechanics and the machinists with calluses on their hands. It's for the farmers and factory workers and the families who worry about prices going up while paychecks stay flat. It's for the young people coming out of school unable to find a job. We will repeal Obamacare peel back the EPA and all the burdensome regulations that are killing small businesses and manufacturing. I'm gonna stand up for fair trade and bring our jobs back from China. We will see wages going up. We'll see opportunity again. We'll see a president who will stand with the people of Wisconsin and Americans everywhere. Ted Cruz for president. Courageous conservatives reigniting the promise of America. I'm Ted Cruz, and I approve this message, and I'd be honored to have your support. I am not a citizen of me. I am a citizen, but a naturalized citizen. Yes. Like Ted Cruz, he's naturalized. I don't see where he fits, but the Republicans tend to do what they want. Yes. And so we'll see what happens with him. So with what you just said, mm -hmm. you, you are bringing out the reality that on the Republican side of things, or just the overall political climate, that white privilege is something that exists. Yes. And white privilege is something that is um, fearful for the um, white American today because they're feeling like they possibly could be losing that privilege or losing control of what that privilege means today. Yes, well, and not just all white Americans now, but especially working class white Americans, they're seeing it as they're losing, they're seeing it as they've lost ground. What they, have, what they don't understand is that the, the ground they've lost is not because of racism, it's not because of them being white or black, it's because of the laws that Congress has, Congress has passed in the past few years where they've allowed major corporations to ship all the work overseas. Because capitalism is a very interesting subject, you know. Capitalism thrives on poverty, 
or it thrives on slavery or slave conditions. Mm -hmm. That's how it was built. That's the foundation of capitalism. It is based on slave labor, free labor. So what happens now is capital is going to find the lowest cost labor, wherever it can find it. If it's in China, it's going to go to China. But eventually, the raises, prices will rise in China. Because as long as you move into a country over a period of years, prices are going to rise. And employers are going, employees are going to want more. So you move from China, you go to India. After you go to India, the same thing is going to happen. So you keep on moving to get cheap, cheap labor. And I want, I want people, young people, black, white, Spanish, young people in this country must understand that once you have capitalists moving labor wherever they can, and when you hear them telling you that you're not competitive, I want you to understand what these people are saying. I'm going to look directly at you now. What they're really telling you when, you're not, when they're telling you that you're not competitive is they're telling you that they want you to work for a dollar a day so that you compete, so that you can compete with China, India, and wherever else they want to take that capital. And if you do not understand that that's what they're talking about, that is what they're really telling you. When they tell you you're not competitive, understand. They're telling you your wages are too high, the $15 minimum you're asking for, that's out of their book. They do not want to do that. So with, with your introduction of um, capitalism, mm -hmm. I want to talk about a good point that has come up in this particular political climate, and that's the idea of socialism. Um, Bernie Sanders is, or it seems to be, mm -hmm. um, someone that is for socialism. Right. And he's actually gone on the record, and we do have a clip of him talking about his position on socialism. Right. So before I ask you your stance on socialism, I would like to just show the Alphas um, Bernie Sanders personal position on that. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and play a clip for you on Bernie Sanders' position on socialism. So let me take this opportunity to define for you, simply and straightforwardly, what democratic socialism means to me. It means building on what Franklin Delano Roosevelt said when he fought for guaranteed economic rights for all Americans. And it builds on what Martin Luther King Jr. said in 1968 when he stated, and I quote, this country has socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor, end of quote. My view of democratic socialism builds on the success of many other countries around the world who have done a far better job than we have in protecting the needs of their working families, their elderly citizens, their children, their sick, and their poor. Okay, welcome back. So that clip uh, gave you a clear understanding of where Bernie Sanders stands from, from a socialistic standpoint. But since I have you here, I want to get your idea of what socialism, from a simpl simplified term, is for our office. Okay, socialism is basically where the means of production are in the, supposedly in the hands of the, of the, of the masses. Uh, that's not what Bernie is talking about. What Bernie is really talking about is, look, what we want is democratic socialism, which is a whole different ballgame. What he's asking for is what happens in Europe, what happens in most developed countries. What he's asking for is what FDR, Frank Delano Roosevelt, that's what he was doing. When capitalism failed in the 1933s, when you had the Great Depression, what, it hap what happened then was that greedy capitalists just destroyed the system. What FDR did, he said, okay, look, when we're going to start the CCC, which was the uh, civilian corps, uh, civilian corps, conser conservative civilian corps, and he also introduced social security. That was a safety net 
so that when people retired, they would have something. Okay. What this new dispensation has been telling young people, and I remember some years ago, uh, you know, they were programming people into understand or into believing that they didn't need social security. They were programming people to believe in that you had to have a 401k plan. In Chicago, we have endured a corrupt political system. And the chief politician standing in the way of us getting good schools is our mayor. If you have a presidential candidate that supports someone like our mayor, you have a candidate who's not willing to take on the establishment. Bernie Sanders is definitely not afraid to take on the system, that he looks beyond that system and sees better possibilities for us. He sees that this is not the way it has to be. That is why I support Bernie Sanders. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. Now, what they really want you to do then is to put all your money on Wall Street. Put your money in the stock market. Now, if you know how to play the stock market, great. But I'll tell you something. Anyone my age, and I've got Social Security, I've got 401k plans, I've got all of them. I lost, in the year, in 2000, I lost over half a million dollars in my Social Security money. Because it's in the, because, not my social security, but my 401k plan. Because it was on the stock market. The stock market crashed. No, if I didn't have other assets, I'd be in trouble. Like most people, you see them going back to work at 65 now. Why? Because they foolishly thought that they didn't, they didn't, they didn't need to have social security too much. So what they did was stuck with the 401k plans. And they put a lot of their money in there. Well, they lost it all, or most of it, or half of it. So that's what Bernie is saying. Bernie okay. is really saying, look, we have got to have a safety net for people so that when they get to age 65, and now they want to increase the age to 60, 69, or 70, or whatever, uh, when they get to that age, there'll be something for them to live on. And they would not have to be greeters at Walmart for six dollars an hour or whatever number that is. And that's the difference. So, so he's not asking to change capitalism. He's just saying, look, we've got to have a safety net so that people will have something when they retire. So why do you think people are so afraid of socialism? Well, you know, that's... Uh, or democratic socialism. Yeah, well, I don't think... Well, they don't understand the difference. Okay. I think what has happened is that, you know, if, if you... Well, I wasn't in the country then. But from talking to a lot of my friends uh, who I went to, went to college with, I, um, I understand that back in the day, uh, when, when, you know, when, uh, with the Soviet Union, uh, it, 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 socialism became a bad word. Everybody thought that socialism was this and what you would, you wouldn't have any rights, you wouldn't be able to do this, you wouldn't be able to do that. And so it's a, it's a boogeyman okay. that they just throw up and they say, look, this is Marxism, and this is Capco, uh, and communism, and all these words that mean absolutely nothing uh, in the real world in terms of what's going on here. Six miles, you didn't go to the gym once, you hit the gym, he was like, okay, I gotta do work. I left him alone to test him, and I looked, and I even asked Chris, I was like, where did he go?